Welcome to deep dive review of the Lenovo ThinkPad X13s Snapdragon 2023. A laptop that promises to deliver powerful performance and long battery life thanks to its Qualcomm Snapdragon 8CX Gen 3 processor. I've put this laptop through its paces to see if it even lives up to its promises and in this review I'll be sharing my findings. ThinkPad X13S Snapdragon 2023 has a typical ThinkPad design with a matte black finish and the iconic red track point in the middle of the keyboard. The build quality is excellent with a sturdy magnesium alloy chassis that can withstand some rough handling. It's also quite thin and light, making it easy to carry around. Also, if we look closer, we can see that Lenovo went extra mile and slightly altered the chassis to emphasize that this is no regular ThinkPad. We have more pronounced rounded corners and instead of wedge design, we have something that suspiciously reminds me of M2 MacBook Air where Z height is same across the entire chassis and it doesn't go thinner around trackpad area. The ThinkPad X13 weighs something over 1 kilo or 2.35 pounds, yet it feels very sturdy thanks to 90% recycled aluminium chassis. And as far as Z height goes, at 13.4 millimeters, this laptop is very thin, which is also possible thanks to ARM architecture, which in general allows for much thinner chassis as thermal design is very different compared to more traditional x86. The 13S has a 13.3 inch FHD plus IPS display with now common 16 by 10 aspect ratio that's bright and sharp with accurate colors and wide viewing angles. The display is also anti-glare, which is a nice touch for those who use laptop outdoors or in the bright environments. However, it is a shame that there is no OLED option and the refresh rate is locked at 60Hz. With ARM-based laptops being snappier while navigating around the UI, it would be nice to have at least 90Hz. The X13S is powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon 8CX Gen 3 processor, which is a high-end chip designed specifically for Windows laptops. The performance is excellent with smooth multitasking and speedy app launches. The laptop also handles demanding tasks, but as expected, it isn't great, but more on that later. The keyboard on X13S is the same as the one on X1 Nano Gen 2, meaning it has reduced 95% size layout. For me, this is especially noticeable while using arrow keys. I often end up hitting page up or down keys instead. Otherwise, it is a very nice keyboard with keystroke of 1.35mm compared to typical 1.5mm found on other ThinkPads and it is also spill resistant. The track point is also a welcome addition for those who prefer it over a touchpad and the touchpad itself is accurate and responsive. My only complaint here is that because of the click pad buttons, it's very small and not ideal for gestures. The X113S has an OK selection of ports, including two USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 ports, SIM slot and a headphone slash microphone combo jack. It also has Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2 for wireless connectivity. Thanks to Qualcomm, we also have Snapdragon X55 5G Sub6 modem built-in meaning this is a truly work from anywhere laptop. For the camera, we have a 5 megapixel RGB sensor with privacy e-shutter. Additionally, there is an optional IR sensor for Windows Hello face unlock functionality. The X13S has impressive battery life thanks to its Snapdragon processor and efficient components. I was able to get around 2 days of very light use and 1 full day of very heavy use on single charge, which is excellent for a laptop of this size and power. This is where ARM really shines. However, this also means that during more intensive tasks, the keyboard area can get a bit warm, but not to the extent that it would prevent you from using the laptop normally. Now, this might be just me, but I absolutely love how this laptop is dead silent at all times. This is mainly thanks to the fact that this laptop only has passive cooling, meaning there are no fans inside to create the noise that so many of us hate. With more and more laptop manufacturers building their laptops from recycled materials, ThinkPad is no exception. Here is the list of everything that Lenovo done to make sure this laptop is more sustainable. For virtualization, I've tested Hyper-V and as predicted I wasn't able to virtualize x86 version of Windows 11, 
but only ARM version, for which you need to be signed in into Microsoft Insider program. Windows 11 booted up ok, but I couldn't get VLAN adapter to work, but I think with some tinkering it would be just fine. I haven't tested Linux virtualization, but based on articles online it should run just fine. You can of course also run Linux natively on ThinkPad X13S. Before we jump into some benchmarks, I wanted to test not only some ARM optimized apps, but also try a bit of gaming. CSGO was the first game I tested. Every time I managed to load up a new round of the game, the game minimized and I wasn't able to go back to the game even though the audio was still on and I could tell the game is running normally. I just couldn't switch back to full screen. Next game I have decided to test was Shadow of Tomb Raider. After warning pop-up window that there is no display adapter installed, I managed to get in the main menu and experience was very laggy. However, I managed to run build and benchmark on low graphic settings while averaging 16 FPS. After that, I didn't even attempt to launch the actual gameplay. Doom 2015 didn't even launch but instead I got this error message. Don't get me wrong, this is obviously not a gaming laptop and I would not expect AAA games run over 60 FPS or something. However, even base M1 MacBook Air can run some games with very respective results. Now let's look at some apps which I've tested. Spotify runs perfectly fine. I've just downloaded the version suggested by Spotify.com based on OS no issues there, works like a charm. Using Microsoft 365, I haven't encountered any major issues while editing presentations in PowerPoint or text in Word. As for the Excel, results were the same. Obviously haven't tried any crazy formulas or pivot tables, but all basic Excel operations work just fine. Firing up DaVinci Resolve and editing some 4K footage just kidding, I couldn't even run DaVinci Resolve again due to compatibility issues. I had no issues with Adobe Express, it ran nice and smooth. Now to some benchmarks. As mentioned before, laptop can get fairly warm to the touch while performing benchmarks but still that quiet since there are no fans. For Cinemensch R23, I've done multiple runs and results before and after some software updates were quite different. Also, there is not a huge difference whether X13S is on power cord or not. Results were nearly identical, that's just another advantage of ARM based systems. As far as Geekbench goes, I managed to get it installed, but I could not get it running. Same goes for Blender Benchmark. After that, I thought sure PC Mark 10 should run no problem, but I was wrong. I couldn't run PC Mark 10 on this PC either. And for 3D Mark, I've run CPU profile with result of 3099. Technically a tablet or detachable, if you will. Microsoft Surface Pro 9 with 5G uses Microsoft SQ3 chipset, which is just a modified version of Qualcomm Snapdragon 8CX Gen 3, same CPU as in ThinkPad X13S. However, Surface Pro has a limited configuration options with maximum specs being 16GB of RAM and only 512GB of SSD. On the upper hand, its 13-inch display supports up to 120Hz of refresh rate. Acer Pin 7 is a convertible based on Snapdragon 8 CX Gen 2 and promises 29 hours of battery life. It has a slightly large 14 inch panel but unfortunately still on 16 by 9 aspect ratio and max brightness of 300 nits. Yet another downside of spin, no laptop in 2023 should have 720p webcam, it's simply unacceptable. Surface Pro X is yet another device from Microsoft equipped with Microsoft SQ1 or SQ2 processors based on older Snapdragon 8CX Gen 2. Max spec is also limited same way as Surface Pro 9 with 5G. While 13 inch 2.8K panel is limited to 60Hz, it has excellent cameras compared to X13S. One 10 megapixel camera with 4K video support and one 5 megapixel camera. Last but not least, there are of course MacBooks with M series CPUs, more specifically the older M1 MacBook Air and the newish M2 MacBook Air. 
Now, if we ignore pricing and the fact that macOS might be a limiting factor for some users, as an early adopter of the M1 MacBook Air, I have to say that Apple has done a great job with their transition to Apple Silicon, especially in terms of third-party app support. Of course, it wasn't all perfect, but I never encountered any major issues while editing videos, photos, or even gaming in the early days of M1 chip. I feel that in the very near future, we will see many more ARM-based Windows laptops popping up everywhere. For example, there are already rumors about Dell developing an entire ultra-thin laptop lineup based on ARM. This also means that ARM manufacturers such as Qualcomm need to step up and deliver a smooth experience in terms of compatibility in some shape or form. For instance, they could develop an emulator similar to Apple's Rosetta because, as you've seen, X86 apps to have a tough time on the X13S. Overall, the Lenovo ThinkPad X13S Snapdragon 2023 is an excellent laptop that delivers on its promises of powerful performance and long battery life. Its design, build quality display keyboard and trackpad are all top notch, and its connectivity options are more than sufficient for most users. That said, while it is evident that ARM-based machines have brought significant advancements to the world of personal computing, such as excellent battery life, slick designs and lighter chassis are indeed a strong selling points that make them a compelling choice for many users. However, one cannot overlook the compatibility issues that come with the territory, which can be considerable drawback for some. It is crucial for potential buyers to weight these benefits against the compatibility challenges before making a decision. While it might take some time for the software ecosystem to catch up, for now ARM-based machines offer an exciting blend of performance and portability that simply cannot be ignored. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.